Okay, Be'ezat Hashem, Na'ase V'Natsliach. I want to welcome you to another session of our Igeret Teshuva class from the uh, Tanya as we continue to learn from the book Betsuri Arum, uh, the book that uh, is spoon feeding us the Igeret Teshuva with the commentary of Harav Yora Michael Abajer Zechet Sadiq Libracha, as well as the additional commentary by his son. Arab Israel Abajer Shlita with the Sidna Da'ara that we have over here. Uh, Baruch Hashem, we've made some tremendous headway. We're up to Perek Vav today, and we're going to be able to go through the entire chapter today. And this is the halfway mark. Right after uh, this uh, chapter, we're going to start heading towards Zion, and we're literally just a few ch- uh, a few chapters away from finishing up this entire learning. Baruch Hashem. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to give some honorable mentions and dedications to a good friend of our class, Yehudit Ben Shabbat, Shashem Vayechotach, Sameachotach, for organizing uh, the gourmet pizza uh, tonight, as well as coming and to learning, and for all that you do, we do appreciate you. Health, wealth, success, Bechabat, Sachat, to you, to your children, and Bezat Hashem Zivug Hagun, Mishor Shmishmatach, Bimhera, Bimhera, Bimhera. Also, we should all make it a point to learn tonight in the Simcha. It's a very good point to learn the Simcha. So we'll do it as well. That we'll be, we'll be uh, you know, happy and joyful as we learn Torah, especially since Adar is upon us, especially since uh, uh, we have Tanit Esther tomorrow. Uh, Purim is on Saturday night and Sunday. These are good and happy days. Also, I'd like to dedicate tonight's class to the Fuar Shalema of Keren, Chava Bat Dona, as well as to Yaakov Ben Dina, as well as for the general success of all the people that are in attendance, Hashem Vechem, Samechem, health, wealth, strength, happiness, but Chava Tzachan Odui, they should go Mala Mala, Bliyari Dod, and Hashem bless you, all the Torah blessings to you and yours. Okay, let's get started. So, to do a review is going to be kind of difficult because there's so much content every week. There's so much. The first three chapters, we were able to connect one to the other, one to the other. But now we sort of have to learn these chapters independently. We're going to reach back. We're going to go back to maybe Perik Dalit, maybe Perik Hey, in order to extract some concepts from there and to expound on them in Perik Vav. Nevertheless, we know that it's uh, we are just in very, very broad strokes learning the difference between Teshuvah del Ela and Teshuvah del Tata, the higher level Teshuvah process as opposed to the lower level Teshuvah process. The higher level Teshuvah process is when you are concerned in returning your soul to God the same way that He gave it to you. And you can only achieve that through working on a Teshuvah de Tata, a lower level Teshuvah that involves you getting really good at doing a proper Teshuvah on 248 uh, positive and 365 negative commandments and doing that through the pathway of Teshuvah Me'ahava that leads to Teshuvah Del Ela. However, if you're not able to activate your Teshuvah process through love, and it has to come through the secondary pathway of Yir'ah, then Yir'ah is your entryway to the Teshuvah process, but does not, does not, does not um, have the same efficacy as Teshuvah Me'ava. As a matter of fact, Teshuvah Mi'ra is just the gateway the beginning in order for you to achieve the level of Teshuvah Me'ava in order to get Teshuvah Del uh, del Ela and that is the ultimate goal of Igerta Teshuvah of Baal Atanya. Just a quick review. What is the difference between Teshuvah Mi'ra and Teshuvah Me'ava? Teshuvah out of fear and Teshuvah out of love? Teshuvah out of fear, you love yourself, you care about yourself, you fear your, you fear about what might happen to you should you not do Teshuvah. Will Hashem punish me? Will Hashem chas v'shalom kill me? Will Hashem take away all the health, finances, or all the good things that are in my life? I don't want to lose that. Or I, I definitely don't want to deal with such a calamity. So what happens? You do it out of fear because you love yourself. Teshuvah me'ava is when you love God, and the relationship with God is so important for you 
that the most important thing is that you get back to that good place with a Kadosh Baruch Hu. That you do a proper Teshuvah process that rectifies the sin to the point that you were before the sin. And and and, 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 and uh, Balatanya, in order to make us understand the mechanics of Teshuvah and how things work, he went as far as to give us the background of the soul, the construction of the soul, the source of the soul, how it's affected in regards to not only uh, the Jewish soul compared to souls of animals, souls of Gentiles, souls of angels. And we, we started to see very, very clearly that there is a big, big difference in the neshama of a Yehudi and why it's so important to rectify it and give it back to Kadosh Baruch Hu the way that he gave it to us. Very, very broad strokes, a tremendous amount, a wealth of knowledge in between all those concepts has been taught in the previous lessons. But that just gives you a little bit of a background of Perek Vav as we enter it. And as Rav Yoram Mikhail Abrajel begins to give us a preface before we start learning Perek Vav. He begins to say, Baal in the in the beginning of Yigat Teshuvah, discusses the whole concept of the mitzvah of Teshuvah. And that mitzvah mina Teshuvah is a, 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 a repentance Doing a teshuvah process is actually a biblical, a biblical obligation. And as far as he's concerned, as far as Balatani is concerned, the only thing that you need to do in order to activate the, uh, the teshuvah, the oraita, teshuvah that is considered a proper teshuvah process by the Torah, sheigmor belibo belev shalem lebal eshuvot lakisla. That all he has to do is azivat achet bilvad. He just has to leave the sin to never do it again, and that is enough. Saying, azivat achet milvad, leaving the sin behind. To not return back to its old ways of going against the words of the king, that is enough of a teshuvah process, which is a complete contrast, not complete contrast, but just uh, teshuvah light, right? Because according to the Rambam, we know that the Teshuvah process has a four, layer to, four layers to it. We know that according to the Ramban, in Chot Teshuvah, Perek Bet, Halacha Bet, he says that there are four stages to the Teshuvah process. One, leave the sin behind. Two, regret. Three, uh, a repentance process. You actually have to verbalize what you did wrong. And the fourth is uh, taking upon yourself to not sin in the future in the same manner. Aval Midoraita, Yeshrak, but according to that's the way of the Rambam but the biblical obligation of Teshuvah has one step which is Azivat Achet Bilvad leaving the sin behind never to do it again by, uh, by uh, according to the Torah that is enough of a process for a person to be considered that he did Teshuvah as a matter of fact so much so that the Gemara tells us then when a person leaves the sin behind, he's not considered a rasha, a wicked individual, and he's, and he's considered uh, 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 that he is capable of testifying in court. We know that anybody who has the label on him of a rasha cannot be used as a witness in court. But anybody who does a proper teshuvah process does not have the label of a wicked individual, a wicked person upon him, and he is able to be uh, serve as ed kasher leedut as a as a kosher witness to testify. <coughs> Furthermore, we said that there's a dual pathway to the teshuvah process. The first tes teshuvah process is according to to the, the 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 simple interpretation of teshuvah. That we said that a person that does teshuvah al pi apshat. Then if a person does a simple teshuvah process, he goes through the transformation of zdonot lishgagot. Things that he did, uh, the, the sins become wiped out. Zadon is something they, a person does on purpose. Shgagot is something that's done uh, uh, by mistake, right? So what happens is, is it takes the, 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 the sins that were done on purpose, turns them into shgaga. By turning into Shigaga, it's as if they're wiped out because a Teshuvah process can wipe those out. And that is categorized as a Teshuvah Mir'ah. 
Well, this is the, uh, the type of teshuvah process that comes from fear. And this is also categorized as teshuvah tata'a. This is the lower level teshuvah. Lower level teshuvah definition is that he does it out of fear and he does it in a, in a way where his, uh, his zedonot begum shgagot, which basically means his balance is wiped out. He had a million sins. He does a simple pro- teshuvah process out of fear. There, he gets wiped out into zero. However, there's an additional process, which is teshuva me'ava, which is also categorized as teshuva ila'a, which is the higher level teshuva, and the teshuva that comes from love and not from fear. And according to the sod, not on, uh, according to pshat, but according to the sod, according to the Kabbalah, this type of teshuva has the power to flip the the merits into merits, meaning a person had a million sins, now it turns into a million merits, a million mitzvot. Now, an additional layer to the teshuvah process was explained to us to the deconstruction of God's name of Yudke Bavke, called Havaya. And if you take a look at if you take a look at the letters of Havaya. You have the letter He and Vav, and then you have the letters Yud and He. So notice that in God's name Havaya, you have two He's. He on the right and He on the left. He with a Vav next to it, and a He with a Yud next to it. And there's a a deep meaning to why God's name of Havaya has two He's. Because one He belongs in Teshuvah that a person does in Teshuvah. Del Tata, and the upper, the, uh, the other hay is connected to Shuva, the person does, and Teshuva Del Ela. So we said, when a person, according to the Zohar, when somebody sins, when he says Avera, what's Avera? Avar, hey, he transgressed on the way of God, or he distanced the letter hey from God's name Havaya, and it's no longer connected, it's far away. So when he does Teshuva, he has to be Tashuv hey. The hey needs to come back. So when that hay goes away, you have to bring it back in order to form God's name. So when the hay leaves God's name, and you do a teshuva, if it's teshuva del tata, you bring the hay from the bottom. If it's teshuva del ela, you're able to bring back the hay del ela. And continues to say that on Sheikh Nesit Agdola actually hinted to this. They actually hinted to this, to this, uh, to, to this uh, process of teshuva According to the letters, if you recall, we learned what is Yud, what is He, what is Vav, and what is He. So we said Yud is the Chokhmah. It's a small little, you know, I'll read it from here so it could be a little, it could be a little more precise. It says, He harishona smucha leot Yud sheinyana Chokhmah. So it said the first He is adjacent to the Yud. Yud is connected to Chokhmah. Chokhmah is having like the, the wisdom. And she is able to take the Chokhmah and bring it to the He. The He is a letter that opens it up. So you have Chokhmah and Binai. Opens it up to do a Teshuvah. So why would that be? So it's, the, the rabbi is telling us over here, it's actually hinted in the construction of Damida. You know when we pray? Pay attention in the Tefillah 101 class. We, made a, we, we, we went deeply to understand why is this the placement of this Berecha? And why is this Berecha following this Berecha? Meaning, each one, there had to be a reason why this is number 12, and this is number 13, and this is number 14, and why is this one before, and why this one after? We followed the order of the Berechot. A snippet of that learning is brought over here. That it says, why is the Berecha of Chonen Hadat comes before Hashivenu, the Torah Techa? Meaning, if you go into the Amidah, after the first three berachot, the first thing, so, okay, I'll give a 30 second to feel a class. So we said that the Amida is constructed of the first three berachot and the last three berachot. The first three never change and the last three never change. The first three have to do with Sheva, with praising a Kadosh Baruch Hu. The final three have to do with Hoda'a, where we're grateful to a Kadosh Baruch Hu. The middle 12, are all yeah the middle twelve are all berachot that are called bakashot. So when we get into that section of bakashot, when we get into that section where we start asking God 
for our daily needs, for the things that we need in our lives, what is the first request? So it's, uh, it's interesting that the first request in the Amidah is, We ask Hashem for wisdom, for knowledge, and for intellect. So why would that be? Why is our first supplication, our first request is intellect? And then it's followed with, Hashivenu avin to atecha. And then it's asking us to do teshuvah. You might say, first do teshuvah, then give us wisdom. So it says, no, this is by design. The man of the great assembly, Anshek Nisrak Dola, authored the Amidah, where first we ask for intellect, for wisdom, for knowledge, and then we ask for teshuvah. She, because she im en la adam chokma, if a guy, if a gentleman, if a person doesn't have wisdom, how does he know what to fix? First, you need to have wisdom. Then you can do teshuvah. You can't do teshuvah if you don't know what to fix, right? Because once you have wisdom, once you have knowledge, once you have intellect, what can you do? You can think about things. You can decipher between good and bad. And once you highlight it, oh my God, I sinned. Then what's the natural next step? Teshuvah. And that's why they are authored in this order. Similarly is, and hinting to this is, Shlomo Amelech in Kohelet, the smartest man to ever live, says in Kohelet, "Varuach tashuv el Elohim, Asher netana, and let the soul come back to God, the one that that gave it." In Masechet Shabbat, on the 152nd page, on the second side, says, "Tena lo kimoshe netana lecha, give it back to God, the way that He gave it to you, clean, pure." Vehainu. And it's expected that the person returned it, uh, the, his soul to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the bare minimum, the way that he received it. And of course, what we need to strive for is to give, it to, to give the soul back on a much higher level. So we see that the Teshuvah process is all about returning the soul in the bare minimum, the way we got it. Not sullied and dirtied and contaminated with all the sins of this world. But rather, be a human being, sin, repent, clean up the mess, and elevate yourself to the next level, the next spiritual level, and give the neshama back to Kadosh Baruch Hu, the way He gave it to you, or in the bare min- uh, uh, or, or in a better state that you got it, or in the bare minimum, the way that He gave it to you. We move on to the beginning of Perek Vav. It begins to say, and just to give you uh, just a small little, small little intro of what's happening over here, Perek Vav, the Rav is going to jump straight into what we spoke about in Perek Dalet, about Karet. When we said that when a person is spiritually excommunicated, he's considered like a dead person, right? So we said there were several mitzvot, Lotase that are written in the Torah, that above and beyond the regular punishment that comes with a sin, these had the add-on of karet, spiritual excommunication, where the body dies at an earlier age, sometimes at 50, sometimes at 60, they don't make it to long life. Then we said that there is also the, the, the certain mitzvot where the Pesukim said karet twice to hint to us that they are uh, cut off here and cut off in the next world so, so their soul gets cut off for the next world and then we said okay if, if that's the fact then how do you come back from that can you come back from Karet and we spoke about the entire Teshuvah process that's required in order to do that so in Perek Vav uh, Baal Tanya goes back and says Omnam even though Zeu Bizman that that, that uh, when a person performs a mitzvah that requires a karet punishment, he's considered as dead, considered as a dead individual. That's only when the Jews were in an elevated level of spirituality. And what was that? That's the time when the Jewish people had Bet HaMikdash and God's holy presence, the Shechina, resided amongst them. During that time is when karet was at its purest form, where uh, when a person transgresses, he really is considered like dead. 
ואז לא היו מקבלים חיות לגופם. And as a matter of fact, if a person transgressed on a karet uh, sin, his body would get no life, no life force. אלא רק על ידי נפש שלוקית לבדה. It would only live off of the life force that comes from the, uh, the, 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 the godly soul part of his neshama. Because we know there's several different sections to the soul. So certain sections are now off, cut off. They're not even connected. The fact that he's walking around, living and breathing is only because he's getting his life force from one place. Nefesh Elokit. Mibchinut pnimiyut ha-shefa shemashpia and sof baruchu that comes from that inner side of a kadosh baruchu and we spoke about this whole thing of the inner side i'll just say very very quickly what is the inner side when god created the world he created the world from the external through the hebrew uh letters and the entire world everything the entire world and everything in it the cosmos and even the angels all of them got created through the hebrew alphabet and with speech the jewish people got created from the breath of a Kadosh Baruch Hu. Mi je nafak, mi dele nafak, right? Man de nafak, mi dele nafak. That Kadosh Baruch Hu actually breathed uh, 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 our soul into us. And the reason why we said, but wait, wait, the Adam is for all of humankind. So in last week's class, if you recall, we said that Adam pertains only to who? Only to the Jewish people. When it says Adam, Adam is only the Jewish people. So we see that we come from the internal side of God and not the external. So that's what he's saying over here. That the, the person, even though he's spiritually excommunicated and cut off, he still gets his life force from the internal side of his soul, from the Nefesh Elokit. How? Al Yadeh Shem Havaya Baruch Hu. Because we, we, we explained how we come from the internal part of God that is connected to the Yud Kei name that has the Pnim Yud of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, not the Chitzon Yud. All the world got created with God's name Elohim and through the Hebrew alphabet. The Jewish people got created through God's breath and through the name of Yud Kei Vav Kei, name Havaya. So that, since we got created from this higher level of creation, Havaya, that's what gives a person who got spiritually excommunicated a life force. In other words, in the time of Bet HaMikdash, the Shekhinah would reside openly with the Jewish people. And the Jewish people had a chayut shel gufam ha-gishmi nimshecha be'ofen yashir m'shem avaya. And at that time, when the reality was that the Jewish people merited to Bet HaMikdash and the Shekhinah amongst them, the way that they would live their life is directly from God's heavenly uh, name of Yud, uh, Havaya, and that's what give them their life. And that's why when somebody transgressed on a sin that he needed mitah bideshamayim, he needed to be killed by the hands of the heavens. O karet ha-menatek ben neshama, or transgress a karet sin, he would disconnect the neshama from its source. And it would disconnect the soul from the hay. Remember, we said the name Havaya has two hays. So it would disconnect him from the hay that is connected to the Shuvah del Tata. Because remember, we said also there's a hay that's connected to Shuvah del Ela. We're learning to Shuvah del Tata. So from here it says that when a guy does a, 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 a sin of Karet, he gets disconnected from that lower hay. And he cannot receive any life force from God's name, Havaya, anymore. And that's why any person who's transgressed in that manner does not live past 50 or 60 years. Ah, l'achar shedu m'adagatam v'gabu b'masem sot galut ha-shechina, but the Jewish people deteriorated, and they no longer have this ability to have God's holy presence reside, reside amongst them. And now we have to enter the secret of the exile and the, and the role of God's holy presence in the exile, the role of Shekhinah in the Galut. He said, during the... Anywhere that the Jewish people went, whether they went to Mitzrayim, whether they went to Bavel, anywhere that they go, the, the, the Shekhinah went with the Jewish people. He brings here a couple of pasukim. Lema'anchem shilachti bavela. Uh, it says over there also that Akadosh Baruch who went with us down to Mitzrayim. So anywhere that we go, 
God is with us. When we are in Israel, God is with us in Bet HaMikdash, in Kodesh HaKodeshi, and the Shekhinah is there. When we don't have that as a reality, God is still with us. Where is He? He's, he's in exile uh, with us as well. The Shekhinah is in exile, suffering in exile. This is why we always pray for the Shekhinah. That's why people get up in the middle of the night to do Tikkun Hatzot. Why? You're crying for the Shekhinah. You feel bad for the Shekhinah. That it's homeless. That it doesn't have a home. That it doesn't live in Israel. That it's not in Kodesh Kodashim. That it has uh, millions of Jews that are not going in the ways of Hashem. So it's suffering outside. It has no home. Imagine somebody who's homeless. How bad do we feel for a homeless individual, right? Like we would move mountains in order for a Jew not to be in the street, right? God's been homeless for over 2,000 years. You're willing to do something for God not to be homeless? That's where we're at. Hashem is in the Galut and He has no home. And He's suffering with us. Because only people that can, the only thing that can get Him out of His homelessness, Kivyachor, is when the Jews go in the way of God and bring Him back home to Yerushalayim. So imagine how, how long He's waiting for us to get our act together, and we're not, and He's suffering with us. He says that because of a person, uh, because of the sins of the Jewish people, God's holy presence, the Shekhinah, was sent away and it was uh, exiled of the land. That the whole impression, the whole efficacy, the whole uh, uh, influence that the letter Hey in God's name Havaya that used to give us life, it went down so low that it no longer has an influence on us. In the time of Bet HaMikdash, we were connected to that letter Hey of God's name and it would give us life. We would get our life force from this hate from God's name. And this is so high. I don't even know what I'm saying. It's such a high level learning over here, this Tanya right now. But at least you can understand that if there is such a concept that there's God's name that gives life to the Jewish people and it's Havaya, hey, Vav, Yud, and hey. And one of the letters during the time of Beth Nikdash is where we would get all our life source from is now gone. So how are we walking? How are we alive? If we don't have this life source, how, how, how do we stay alive in the diaspora? What's running us? What are we running on? Door cells? Like, We're looking for this life. We're looking for it. Okay. Baruch Hashem is going to give us an answer over here. Amen. For those of you that uh, learn the tefillah class with us, you're going to appreciate this. There's going to be an additional layer to what we learned uh, a couple of months ago about Klipat Noga. Remember Klipat yes. Noga? You say, remember remember what, that, that, what that Klipa is, what that spiritual, negative spiritual husk is and how to manage it and how to deal with it? Now we're going to learn Klipat Noga a la Baal Tanya style. Completely, completely different outlook and it gets deep and very interesting. And I can just give you a preview to uh, uh, a few more pages in the lesson. Rav Yoga Michael Abedjel Zechet Tzadik Vibrecha gives us some good, good, good life advice over here. Two, three beautiful nuggets that we're going to be able to take away with us uh, today. But let's get into Klipat Noga. So he says, so now that we don't have this connection to the hey uh, from God's name Havaya that would give us the life force during Bet HaMikdash and uh, and it went deteriorated from level to level, from the, to a lower level to a lower level. So much that this letter hey went down in, 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 in levels that eventually it got uh, it got uh, covered up. This letter hey that gives us our life force has been covered up, and all its influence has been. Sabotage has been hijacked by the ten sefirot of Noga. Dun, dun, dun. What? So you can see that besides having ten sefirot that we all know, there's an additional ten sefirot that connected to Noga. 
And that's where the hay that gives us the life force is, is right now. So how do things work? This is very interesting. How do things work now? Because I want to know how I'm walking around. If the life force for the Jews comes from this hay in the time of Bet HaMikdash, and now we're in the diaspora, and now it deteriorated, it has no more power, and that got hijacked by Noga and the Ten Sefirot, and we know how complicated it is because each one has a certain thing that it activates, both in a negative and a positive way, what do we do? So the Rav over here, Mamash, he did such a good job at breaking it down. Like I said, I, I, I don't have a better term. He just spoon feeds it to us, piece by piece, until we get it. He says, Noga is an incredible uh, klipa. Klipa, and I just want to say it's a negative spiritual force, right? It's something that, that it's like a barrier. You know, the word klipa, let's imagine a fruit. So if there's a fruit, take an orange, right? When you want an orange, you want the orange that's inside. That's the good stuff. That's what you want to eat. The peel on the outside, that's the klipa. Right, that's what's protecting it. But it's also the barrier, it's the shell, the thing that, that's holding us back from what we want. So, let's think about it. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Why? Up until the time that I want to eat that orange, that peel is exactly what I need. But the minute I get to the point that I want to eat, do I need that peel? Useless, right? Because I want the fruit, I don't want the peel. So there's positive and negative uh, approaches to a, uh, a peel or to a klipa. Similarly with noga. Take this advice and, and try to uh, internalize it. There are certain times... When I learned time a lot, it was always more that it's a neutral. You could neutralize it. Correct. That's it's neutral. Strong, it's yeah. you, you control it. You could neutralize it. You, it's you, you control whether you take that force of noga negative or positive. We'll get to it in a second. M many different things. There's a lot of emphasis on it during the time of uh, Shogavim that we work on Noga. There's also in, in Hanukkah, we work on this Klippa of Noga. In general, we work on it all the time. We'll give some examples. For example, you're allowed to eat, right? Eating is allowed, right? Good kosher food, you're allowed to eat. But if you overeat, right? So Noga, if I'm eating, just so I can have strength, so I can go to my Torah class, and it'll get me to lunch, and I'll eat there again, so I can go to, to my tefillah, and I'm gonna eat again, so I can go raise my children. All day long I'm eating, in order to what? To Strength. perform mitzvot. You just took noga, and you're using it in the positive. But if you're sitting down, and you're overeating, you're overindulging, and all you're doing is uh, you know chasing the best steak in town, or you won't have a scoop of ice cream, you're gonna have a tub of ice cream. What happened? You took something that is what? Oh my God, I just found out her noga. <laughs> so imagine what happens. At that moment, you took something that is permissible and you turned it into something negative. So, and that's in every, in every single thing, right? So when we do that, we have to be very, very careful because that noga is a neutral energy. You can use it for good or you can use it for negative. You have to navigate it. So that's where we are. We're, we're in, in noga. So let's, so let's see what... The Rav says about Noga. He says, Noga, there's a little bit of good in it, and it's very different from all the negative spiritual husks that we have to deal with, which are Anan Gadol, Ruach Sara, Esh Mitlakeche. Those are names of very, very that's tough. There's no good in them at all. Hemra Gamur, and Mehen Yonkim Omot Haolam Et Kocham, and all the nations of the world take all their life force, all their living from three negative klipot called. Anan Gadol, Ruach Sa'ara, Eshmit Lakechet. So the whole world gets its life force from these three uh, klipot. What about the Jew? Ah, the Jew? Originally, Havaya. Re originally, God's name, Havaya, we get our life force from the hay. Now, that hay went down, went down, went down, went down, and now Noga's got it. Now Noga has it. Oh, what's the deal with Noga? Okay, so... If Noga has the life force, how do we now manage ourselves in order to um, to use it properly? So it says, Noga nimshechet nefesh abayamit shel Yisrael. He says, from this Noga, we know that our souls has two parts to it. Nefesh behemit and nefesh shelokit. We have the godly part and then we have the physical part, right? The nefesh behemit. 
So the nefesh behemit of the Jewish people comes from Noga. Nefesh Elokit, we'll talk to about it soon. Right now, just put it on the shelf. But the nefesh behemit of the Jewish people is controlled by Noga. And the, the other three spiritual husks that the rest of the world gets them from, we just mentioned them. Now, according to Hasidut, it says that these Shivim Umot, the reason, or the rest of the Gentile nations, the reason why they have these three negative spiritual klipot that they get their life force from is because these three klipot, their, their essence, their root, is embedded in three physical desires. Ta'avat ma'achalot, ta'avat nashim, ta'avat mamon. The three things that every person chases in their life is the desire for food, desire for women, and desire for money. So it's, it, it's, it, it's food, sex, money, which is, sums up today's society. Why? Because that's how they get their life force. And they only feed their nefesh behemit. Because their main life force comes from a source of a nefesh behemit, that this is the power of those kilipod, that also explains to us why they chase those things so much. That's the essence of where they get their life from. So now it's pashut that they should act like that. It's simple. As far as we're concerned, we have the nefesh elokit, which gives us the balance of the spiritual and the physical. And what we do is we take the spiritual side of our nefesh and we elevate the physical. Meaning, let's see what they're struggling with. Ta'avat Oh, they can't get enough of food. Us too. We love food. All we do is eat. Holidays, Shabbatot, Chagim. Wait till you see the feast we're going to do on Purim. But what's the difference between us and them? When we eat, we sanctify. We first make a beracha, then, 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 then we do a beracha achrona. We bless in the beginning, we bless in the end. We're grateful to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Also, if you're on a higher level, you know that you're releasing spiritual sparks that are embedded in the food, and you're elevating that fruit or that or that uh, piece of meat to the higher level. I mean, we sanctify the food. We also don't eat every type of food, only kosher. We also separate between meat and milk, and all the things that we do. We're doing it at Kedusha. We take the physical and we elevate it to the spiritual. Habat habat nashim, right? What about uh, you know the, the desire for women as he, he, he brings it over here? So yeah, of course, everybody, uh, you know, that's Hashem made us. A man needs to be with a woman, but how do we do it? We do it according to a mishvah. First, we get married. Then what? Well, we have the tarat mishpacha, how to do it properly. Two weeks on, two weeks off, and then after that, what do we do? We have the, we bring the children. After we bring the children, what do we do? Brit milah, after brit milah, chinuch. Okay, well, their desire is like our desire, but we just do it differently. We just guide it towards the pathway of spirituality. Ta'avat mamon, oh, money, the sickness of this world, right? And God we trust is on the dollar. Everybody's after the money, the money, the money, the money, the money, the money. Yeah, of course, everybody needs money. How are you gonna pay your electric bill? How are you going to put gas in your car? How are you going to pay the mortgage if you don't have money? You can't live in this world without money. They call money zoos. You know what zoos? Zoos means move. Money makes the world move. You can't move in this world without money. So it's necessary. Ah, so what does a Jew do? Okay, he earns it honestly. And when he earns, he gives 10% to tzedakah. He gives tithe. And we, we, we know that the whole idea of, of earning money in this world, it's the root of all evil. So we make sure, we're very, very particular that the business that we're in is a kosher business and the product that we're selling is a good product. And then when we make the money, we make sure that the money is, uh, is, is, is accounted for. And once it's accounted for, we make sure to give 10% to the shul and, we take it, and we're very big on giving tzedakah and doing acts of kindness and chesed. So even when it comes to money, we give. And there's some people that give homage. And I'm going to say in the name of my dear friend, I'll say it in the name of Anonymous, who says, anytime you have a chance to speak about Chomesh, speak about Chomesh, that he testifies himself, that there were times when he wasn't able to afford anything, but somebody came to him, or he always made, made sure that when he gives tzedakah, it doesn't come from Aser, he always gave 20. 20, 20, always 20, 20%, 20%, 20%, and he saw great, great returns and Baruch Hashem, money is not a problem for him. He says he encourages everyone to try 
test Hashem on this 20. He says, I tested Hashem and it works. Please let everybody know. So if anybody's struggling with finances, try 20. So now, Klipat Noga. So Klipat Noga has some good and some bad. And it's our job to separate the good and the bad because we're getting our life force from there. It's very dangerous. What we do can either go to the dark side or can go towards the good side. As a matter of fact, he gives us a tip over here that Venoga Keoti Ye, he says that the person that wants to separate the good and the bad in this Klipat Noga, the best thing for him is to concentrate on blessing on food with intention, to have prayers and Torah learnings for the sake of heaven. That's how you can navigate this spiritual negative husk of Noga in the right direction, that when you bless on food, you bless properly, and that you should pray and learn Torah. And this is why when we say, Leshem Yehud Kudusha Bechush remember we said Leshem Yehud. What is Leshem Yehud? It's the text that we say before every mitzvah. And we spoke about many different parts of this Lashem Yechud. Here, I'd like to make a distinction on one other part that we didn't focus on before, which is when we say Lashem Yechud Kudusha Bechush we are trying to unify Kudusha Bechu, Akadosh Baruch Hu, and the Shekhinah. Bedechilu Rechimu Rechimu Dechilu, with love and fear, with fear and love, because we said that's the two approaches to God. You come to God through fear or through love, or through love or through fear, whatever it is, they go hand in hand, needs to be done. In order to bring uh, uh, Hashem's name of Yud Kei Vav Kei together, in the name of all the Jewish people. And then there's a part that it says, Lakim Shechinta Me'afra. That we do this also in order to elevate mm. God's holy presence from the dirt. So what do you mean the Shechina is in the dirt? Yeah, remember? Havaya is connected to when the Jewish people are in the Bet HaMikdash and the, the Shechina resides over there and now we deteriorated and now uh, it went so far down that Noga has it and you have to go through 10 different sefirot of Noga, you know what that means? It means that God's Holy Presence, the Shekhinah, is in the dirt. To get God's Holy Presence out of the dirt, out of Noga, is through blessing properly, learning Torah, and praying. V'mamshich ba'alatanya v'omer. Ba'alatanya continues to say, that Noga, hamashpi, uh, that the sefirot of Noga, hamashpiot shefa v'chayut, al yedi hamazalot v'kol tzva shemayim v'asayim shalem l'kol achay gashmish b'olam hazeh. What a statement. You ready for this? That the ten emanations, the ten sefirot of Noga, are the ones that have an influence of all the abundance of this world and all the life force to all creations that are uh, administered through the zodiac and through all the planets and all the stars and all the ministering angels that are in the, in the heavens. Any living thing in this world. Even for the plant life. So we see that everything in this world is getting its life force from this Klipat Noga. So, Kamar, Kemamar, Botan Zikunar Vacha, and Lecha Kol Esed Milamata, Sheen Lomazabra Kesh, Makio Tova Melo Gadel. He says, We have a famous saying in Chazal that there's not a blade of grass below that doesn't have an angel on top that hits it and tells it, Grow. So we see that all those worlds are interlaced and interconnected and they're getting all its life force from Noga. He says, and furthermore, not only that, but you know that all the sinners and the, uh, and the, 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 the transgressors of the Jewish nation also, 
receive a life force for their body to physically be alive and also spiritual sustenance for their soul from the nefesh behemit from Noga. So we get it from there too. Well, hold on. Let me take that. The sinners get it from there too. And when a person gets his life force from Noga, he should know that he's very, very far from Torah, very, very far from mitzvot, and and even though he could have a phenomenal life. Meaning, imagine, a person is disconnected from God. Disconnected from God's name of Havaya. He's not getting his life force from Noga. And not from the good one, from the bad side. And he is rolling. He's having the life of Riley. He's having a tremendous life. He's got the penthouse. He's got the Bentley. His bank account is full. He's on, on social media with a smile from ear to ear for years. This guy is living the life. How could that be? If he's getting his life force from Noga. He says that even though it's not similar to the life force that animals get, that even the even animals get their life force from Noga. They just get it from Noga, but it, it's not connected to God's name of Havaya. So now we are now, start imagining now two different things. Noga has a life force. So let's just say we're on I-95, right? I-95 has several highways that gives all its power to animals, goyim, all that. The express lane, which is separated from them, also is Noga. However, that one, if you go back and back and back and back and back, you see that its original source is God's name, Havaya. It's just deteriorated and now it's on the express lane of I-95 and it's there also. So even though that everybody's from Noga, but it's still separate. It's parallel. What, it's parallel, but what the Goim and the animals get, the life force of Noga is not connected to the Noga that the Jewish people uh, get the life force from. Why? And here he makes a nice little distinction. Inside is God's name Havaya, it's wrapped up by Noga. So that's how she, they can get Noga, even though that they're sinners, and even though they're still connected to Havaya. And that's why you should never make light of any individual, because he's still connected to Havaya. Any Jew, even if he's on the lowest level, his life force inside of him is still God's the the from And there's no such thing as Karis if it's coming from the That's the guy's in car in correct mode. He's in correct mode. Okay. This is he's letting us know that he's in correct mode and he's still okay. getting his life. So we, we still didn't get to the punchline. We'll get there. He's building it up, Baruch Hashem. Continues to say, Palatanya. He says, all the sinners of the Jewish people can still get a life uh, or a life force sent to them through the part of their soul, which is nefesh behemit, the animalistic side of their soul, just like animals get it. But they get that life force through the delivery system of klipat noga. That's when the time in Tehillim it says that there is times that a person is likened to an animal. When is he likened to an animal? When he gets his life force like an animal from the power of Noga. He says, and even more, even more so, that when he gets his life force from this Noga, he gets it he gets it from there more than the animals get it from there. Why? Just like it says in the Zohar, mm-hmm. Ooh, you ready for this? Look what the rabbi is saying. The rabbi is saying. He says, when a person acts like an animal and starts to sin, and now he's getting his life force from the klipat noga that is hijacking the hay of Shem Havaya, he says, the Zohar says in Parashat Pekudeh, 
that all his spiritual sustenance, all his life force, all the influence that he gets uh, as he is living below, the minute he does something wrong in the eyes of God, whether it's with speech, whether it's with thought, whether it's with sinning, whatever it might be, know that right now, that person, what is he plugged into? He's getting all his life force from Sitra Akra. His life is, get, is, is getting supplied from the dark side, from the other side. So it's like you almost take the, the plug that's connected to Kedusha and to God, take it out of the wall, go to Darth Vader, plug it in, and now you are on the dark side. And he's drawing all your power from there. And he can get life force from there. So me, he's plugged in. He has life. But it's not coming from a Kadosh Baruch It's coming from somewhere else. But we'll explain. We'll explain. Because it's still a Kadosh Baruch It's always a Kadosh Baruch always. But we'll explain how that too can be a Kadosh Baruch But just, we shifted, uh, we shifted, not categories, but with departments. Right? We took him from the holiness. We took him from Noga. And now he's taking what? Completely from Sitra Acha. And he says, and even in the Sitra Acha, even on the other side, there are a lot of different halls that correspond to a lot of different sins that people do. So in order, you know, because when you make a, a statement like that, you start to, the wheels start to turn. Oh, yeah. there's another side? Well, uh, you know, uh, hold on. Before we get into heresy or anything like that, let's start to understand what we're talking about. So, Baruch Hashem, Rabbi Salah Bajan, over here, he says, I know you're going to think like that. I know you're going to... You know, while the class is going on, you're going to start thinking about that comment and try to figure things out. So he gives us over here uh, the Tzemach Tzedek. He actually opens this up for us in the book, Derech Mitzvotecha. He explains. Before creation, there was only one reality. It was a Kadosh Baruch And after creation, there was also one reality, only a Kadosh Baruch Before and after, one, always one. Get that clear. However, Now, before creating the world, and after creating the world, Hashem is the source that gives life to everything in this world. In other words, imagine, as every single thing on this planet has an electric cord, right? A power cord connected to it. And we, what are we connected to live? HaKadosh Baruch Everything. The mosquito has a power cord. Uh, we have power cords. The elephant has a power cord. The tree has a power cord. Everything is connected to HaKadosh Baruch Where do we get our life from? From God. Okay? The minute he pulls the plug, there's no more life. HaKadosh Baruch Hu powers this entire planet. He says, but within this reality where Hashem powers the entire existence, there's three different levels of how He interacts with His creations. Level number one. Hayut mipnimiyut hayotzon. That God gave life from His inside. And again, what did we say about that? That's when Hashem blew air, right? He blew air into Adam HaRishon. And that air comes from the internal side of God. That's one way of giving life. Second, there is life force that was given from the external side of God, which is what? Everything else. Everything else except for, uh, for Jews got its, uh, its life force from the external side of God. And I'm just going to plug in a refresher that... The external creation of God came from God's name Elohim and through the Hebrew alphabet. And, and, and just to crystallize it for you, the first Pasuk in Bereshit. Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aris. In the beginning, Elohim, right? The, the God's name of Elohim. Bereshit bara Elohim. And what did he create? Et. What's et? From Aleph to Taf with the Hebrew alphabet. Bereshit Elokim Et. The Hebrew alphabet created the whole world. So now that's the whole world. The Jewish people from the, youth, the name Yud Vavke and God's name of Yud Vavke, that, that's the, the, the life force that was given to us is through a breath. The other one is through speech and 
the Hebrew alphabet, the Jewish people through breath and Yud Kei Vav Kei. Okay? So those are two pathways of giving life into this world. There's a third one. And the third one is Hayut Mipchinat Achorayim. It is a, a life force that's called Achorayim, the backside, let's call it of God. And that's all the life force that Hashem gives through the channel of Klipot. So we have three ways of how Hashem keeps the world alive. One, the Jews' breath, Havaya. Two, the whole world and everything in it, including the cosmos, everything else, with, with God's names of Elohim and through the Hebrew alphabet. And anything that has to go to the low level of the Kalipot, the sp negative spiritual house, all that happens through the Kalipot, but it's considered Achorayim. It's not God's speech, it's not God's breath, it's the backside of, of, of how uh, things get their life force. I think he did a beautiful job explaining that, because otherwise we start thinking different things that are uh, going to be wrong to think. So now, just to get a, a little bit more clarity on this, let's just take our learning to a, to a higher level. Everybody's holding? We're good? Yeah. Okay, good. Because I'm not, I can't go back and return. <laughs> Review. As long as you're holding, we're good. Okay. We know that the whole reason why God created the world. Nitava Kadosh Baruch Hu shetiyelo dira betachtonim. Kadosh Baruch Hu wanted to have a, 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 a dwelling place in the world below. And that was his main internal desire. And from that place of internal desire, who came from there? The Jewish people, from the Pneumius. Now, so they are the ones that take the, the, the life force of this world from God's Pneumius. The second level that we said that all the rest of the creation is just so they could be living things in this world. Hashem created it with, uh, with words and with the Hebrew alphabet. He says, but the third one, and this is what I really wanted to get to, is the klifot. It's all the two Asha Ba'olam. So we know that everything that the Kadosh Baruch Hu created has a reason for it. So even though that there's all these negative spiritual entities in the world, all these negative klifot, why are they there? And how do they, how do they uh, function? He says, He says there's a concept called Achorayim. What's Achorayim? It's like, it's like me interacting with somebody, they're behind me, right? When somebody's in front of me, I'm talking, I'm interacting, I'm smiling, there's a, right, there's a... Face is torture. You know, there's a... There's an interaction. And even if somebody's in front of me, but very far away, we still have like, you're still facing. But then when somebody's in the back of you and you're just like answering them, you know, obviously you don't, you're giving them your back, it's an achorayim. It's the backside of God. And he, he, he described this as netina lelo cheshek. That Hashem gives this, but without a desire. It has to be there. It has to be part of existence. There has to be negative Klipot uh, uh, in the world, and he he gives life force through those klipot, but he doesn't like it. Netina lelo cheshe. Ki kol metziut a klipot b'alam holit naged lekdusha because their entire their entire existence of all these spiritual huskis to do what to go against the word of God. So Hashem is empowering something that is against Him. So nobody likes to empower something that's against Him, right? Like sometimes you'll see there's a uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, sometimes parents, sometimes teachers, sometimes uh, uh, people in a workplace, there's some, sometimes people in communities where this guy is the problem. We, we, we know who the problem is. <laughs> Sorry. There's an individual that he's the problem. And yet what? We still feed him. We still keep him in the house. We still teach him. We still accommodate him in shul. How does that happen? Same thing with Kadosh Baruch Hu. He says, it has to be that there's, there's going to be people that are bad. They're going to get their life source from there, even though that they're going to go against me. So now that we've established that, and he says, and a person has free will. You choose where you want to draw your life force from. Do you want to get it from the Sita Akra or from the Kedusha? 
Where do you want your life force to come from? From the dark side or from the holy side? And from there is the person's entire influence of his entire life. And all this is reflected in his thought, in his speech, and his actions. Meaning an individual can draw from the good side or from the bad side, from the holy side or from the evil side, all according to the way he speaks, all according to the way he thinks, and all according to his actions. He has Bechira Chofshi Lachlit Batsmo. Every single individual has the power to decide for himself where is he drawing his life force from. And we get this from another Pasuk in Koheret. Shmuloma Melech, the smartest man to ever live, says, Kize leumadze asa elokim. A Kadosh Bahu created both things in in the let's call it in uh, in complete not unison but rather Hashem creates things that are even that are fair just as much evil as in the world know that there's the exact same amount of kedusha in the world as a matter of fact something that will explain to us this way this measure of how Hashem runs the world that there's always an equal amount of of both good and bad in the world this balance this is is um, Is in Azazel. Remember the the sacrifice in uh, in Yom Kippurim. We have two goats, and the rules are they have to be identical in size. They have to look identical. They have to be identical in weight, in height, and in value. And one goes on top of the altar for Kadosh Baruch Hu, the holiest sacrifice of the year, and then the other one gets pushed off of a cliff, and the Samech Mem eats it for barbecue on Yom Kippurim. So both of them are identical. One goes high and one goes low. He says it's even hinted in the word Azazel. What's Azazel? Ze leumad ze asa elokim. Ze leumad ze asa elokim reshet evot Azazel. So we see that there's a concept that a Kadosh Baruch Hu, I, I tried to give a different it's, maybe. It's a polarity. Everything has a polarity. Correct. So I tried to give an example to this. We, 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 you don't know what hot is if you don't have cold. There's no joy without pain. There's no day without night. There's no, uh, you know, there's uh, total opposites. There are everything that's polar, right? But when it comes to uh, polar opposites, but when it comes to uh, Kedusha and uh, Tum'ah, I always like to say those video games. Do you ever play Street Fighter? You know, you can choose the same player. They're the same player, right? This guy, it's it, 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 Ryu versus Ryu. Right, uh, you, you you could fight you Ken versus Ken, right? They're, they're both the same person. They're the same power, same everything. Who's going to win? It all depends on if you know how to use the the control. If you know how to control the player. Similarly, zel ze asa elokim, meaning what? Akaros like who says that the tumah that you see in the world, you have the exact amount amount of kedusha in the world. You see your life, you can, the same amount of life force you get from, uh, from the Sitra Achim, from the, uh, the side of Kedusha. What's the difference? Where you're drawing it from. And don't think that one is stronger than the other. It all depends on how you manage those forces. Because if you know how to use the buttons better than the guy next to you, you win. Same thing, if you know how to manage your soul better than the, the person next to you, you win. And he says, oh, and the sitra akha, the dark side, you know where it's plugged into? You know where it's getting its life force from? He says, it gets it from the ten sefirot of Noga that we were talking about this entire time. So the sitra akha is actually taking, getting all its life force from the ten emanations of Noga. Because Noga has good and bad. And when you, the minute you hear that concept of good and bad, what do you think about? You think about etzadat tov vera. Right? Etza, I'm sorry. Uh, no, etzadat tov vera. Whoever knows the concept, the Kabbalists that know the etzadat of tov vera, knows that all the life force comes in the Shefa, can get from the Sita Acha or from the Kedusha. I think... So, 
here he shares with us uh, a life tip to actually like so so let's say right now don't you want to know where your life force is coming from don't you want to know if you're drawn from Noga or from Kedusha you want to know how nobody wants to know now okay. okay so he says the reason why Kedosh Baruch Hu loves the Jewish people is because the Jewish people are happy they're happy people as it says in Tehillim, on the 149th chapter, on the second pasuk, Yisrach Yisrael Be'osav. HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves the Jewish people because they're happy people. So he says, Adam yechol adat et im Hashem ohev oto o sone oto. A person can find out if Hashem loves him or hates him. How? How do you know if God loves you or God hates you? Lefi ha'gashat ha'simcha o'atzvut shebo. It's according to the level of your joy and happiness or the depression that's inside of you. If you're happy, God loves you. If if he said, Hashem hates you. Because when a person is happy, he should know that is a testimony that Kadosh Baruch Hu received his Teshuvah process and God loves him and he accepted his Teshuvah process. If you're walking around happy, know that God accepted your work, that you're sorry that you did, and you're plugged in again to Kedusha. If you're feeling sad, if your neshama can't get out of the, the, the slump that it's in, it's because you're not doing the proper Teshuvah process, and you, you're plugged into the other side. Sharia kol bide shamayim. He says everything's in the hands of heavens. Even if a person stumps his toe, is all decided by heavens. So a person should begin immediately to be happy in order to draw God's love upon him. And when a person will be happy, Hashem will fill all the voids that the person is experiencing in his life. That's why a person in the time of prayer has to pray out of happiness. Like a, per, like, like a servant that serves his rabbi, or like his master, out of happiness. I want to share a thing with you that maybe we're going to do a class about it. But you know what works? Try saying the word besimcha before every, every time you do something. You know when people ask you, hey, can you get me something? Besimcha. Gladly. I'll gladly do it. You know, like the, in the morning, I've been trying to, it's for me, but I try to bring more people on board. I was like, hey guys, we're about to start praying. Let's make it a point to do it. It's a simple. You have no idea. You put on tefillin, I stop for a second. I'm going to put on tefillin. It's simple. Just that word changes everything. You find yourself like with a smile on your face. And, and then you say, before I go to Samidah, before I go to Samidah, you know what I'm doing? It's simple. You know I'm going to talk to my wife before? It's simple. I'm going to do homework with my, with my daughter? It's simple. It changes Everything. And apparently we know that when we serve Hashem, the same time, that's everything. The, our whole performance is, uh, 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 our whole blessing, is, the whole Torah is hinged. After the 98 curses, it's all hinged that we, all these curses, has will come, will come upon our enemies. If what? If we don't serve Hashem, the same time. So we see that this whole thing of activating a joy, happiness, and just being like a, a pleasant individual uh, in our daily lives has a tremendous amount of efficacy on our day-to-day -day spirituality and what we need to, uh, what we're trying to draw down from the heavens. It says in the Zohar that a Kadosh Baruch Hu, the Zohar brings, the, the Baal Atanya brings the Zohar. As it says, Man de nafach, the one that blew, blew from him. The one that blew breath, it's from his breath. That, and this is like such a grand statement, but you know, I'm just going to read it. It says that Kadosh Baruch Hu, from his internal, he blew, because of course we can't imagine a person, Hashem is a person, or, or somebody that has a lungs, or, or, or like, a, like a, any sort of like a human form. Of course not. This is just for us to grasp the concept 
that Kadosh Baruch Hu tzimtzem atzmo, he contracted himself a, a million different contractions until he became super tiny in order to reveal himself in the breath that he blew into every single Jew. Every single Jew needs to know that he has a portion of God within him. And just because of that, when a person knows that a part of God is in him, that should give you a lot of fear not to sing. And also give you a lot of fear to be very happy. And that's what the rabbi is telling us over here. Have fear not to stain the soul. But also be overjoyed. Look what you have inside of you. It's, a, it's unique to the, to the exclusive club of the Jews. So we said that you know the Jewish nation are connected to God through a rope. And what is the rope? Our rope below is connected to our rope up above. Uh, the, the rope that is connected to our neshama over here is connected to our neshama up above in Kisei Kavod. And if we move something below, it makes a big impression above. And if you want something from above to come down, it's because you have to make some moves over here. And we know that the Chuta Meshulaj lo inatek. Again, uh, the rabbi is quoting Kohelet a lot. Shlomo Melech it says that the, 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 the connection, the, the trifecta of God, the Torah, the Jewish people, you can't, uh, you can't separate this connection. And that's why the, uh, 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 the Jewish person that needs to have three things in his heart. Just like we have Kudusha uh, Oraita, and Israel are inseparable, you should have three attributes in your uh, in, in yourself in your character that are non-negotiable you should definitely have them as part of your the fabric of your being what are they ahavat hashem the love of god ahavat torah the love of the torah and ahavat say loving another jew he says that is the path that is the path of a jew you want to know what is what do you have to make an effort on uh, okay, I'm getting up today. I, I learned the entire class. What am I doing tomorrow? I learned an entire hour and a half about Tanya. What am I doing? What's the call to action? The call to action is to increase your approach of happiness towards three things. The love of God, the love of Torah, and the love of the Jewish people. Al-Derech Mashal He's talking, he's describing over here, just like a rope above is connected to a rope below, that if you shake it below, it's going to make an impression up above. Similarly, is the source of a person's soul that is found in the Kisei Kavod, which is the main part of a person's soul, that has a string that comes down all the way to the Neshama that's below, mipchinat heitata'a haniskai le'eh. And this is all connected to the lower letter, hey, in God's name of Havaya that we spoke about before. So, so much going on. There's so much going on between the levels of Teshuvah, the parts of Teshuvah, the, the, the soul, the parts of the soul, the letters of God that are connected to the soul. You look at all these layers, layers, and layers. And I tell you that if we just read this, see this? We would never get what we're talking about. Thank God for the commentary. And thank God that the Rabbi Yoram, Zechit Tzadik Livrecha, as well as the Rabbi Sal are opening up these concepts for us. And once again, spoon feeding it because we would never get it. We would never get it. We'd be out of here in 15 minutes. Like we will read it and we think like, oh, we understood. We don't understand nothing. So we can see that so much is going on in these words. Furthermore, and similarly, just like acts of kindness, Torah, mitzvot, make uh, an impression in the heaven and are able to draw down spiritual abundance from up above, similarly, is somebody who does evil deeds, evil acts, and from there he draws from the hall of the dark side. And that one that he takes his soul to the low levels of the klipot. So here the rabbi gives us an example. And let me tell you, 
This one's going to feel like a smack in the face. He says, when a person looks at things that are inappropriate, at that very moment, he takes his thoughts and, and, his, uh, and his holy soul that is a part of God to the toilet. Imagine taking something as holy as a piece of God to the toilet. And not only that, as a, as a, as a parable or as, a, as an example, imagine taking a king of a country and you take him to the toilet and not only that, you take his head and you shove his head inside the excrement inside the toilet. Is there any worse embarrassment to a king to be taken into the toilet and have his face shoved into the excrement? Right. He says, that's what happens when you take your eyes and thoughts into the dark places they're not supposed to be. Like I said, it's like a smack in the face. So what does Kadosh Baruch Hu says? Okay, this is where you're bringing me. This is where you're taking me. That's where your thoughts are. You have something holy and pure inside of you. And you're taking it to these places. Hashem goes. He leaves him. And now begins the personal esterpani. The personal, when a person feels that God has turned away from me. I don't feel him in my life. Everything is so bad. Everything is so tough. He says, Maza esterpani. You want to know what esterpani is? All of a sudden he sees that his wife... He's not so much into him anymore. All of a sudden his wife doesn't listen to him anymore. All of a sudden his children don't listen to him anymore. And not only that, when he goes to work, all of a sudden all these different problems popped up. And he just doesn't understand what's wrong with everybody. What's wrong with my kids? What's wrong with my wife? What's wrong with everywhere I go? Problems, problems, problems. And what does he say? Oh, for sure I know that. Oh, they put the evil eye on me, right? Or he says, maybe I have to check the mezuzot in the house. For sure it's the mezuzot. For sure, you know, oh, look, it's impossible. My wife, my children, my work, everything is going down. How could it be? Oh, he says, or he takes his friend's advice. You know what you need to do? You need to go to Uman. Go to Uman. Over there, you'll go on the rabbi's grave. Over there, everything will go away. And he says, and he goes through all these things. He changes the mezuzah. He, he goes to Uman. He does all this Ainara rituals, Right? And all of a sudden he sees that things are getting worse. It's even more difficult. And, and, he, he, and he sees the pasuk come to fruition. That Hashem increases the, the, the afflictions because of the sins. So what is a person like that supposed to do if he's not going to do the rectification? He says... The problem here is not that he needs to do any sort of rectification or any of these processes that he just mentioned before. Rather, he says the problem is he never disconnected himself from the problem. As long as you're still connected to the problem, no matter what you do, nothing will change. Meaning if the guy is still looking at things that are inappropriate on his phone, and he's giving tzedakah, and he's flying to Uman, and he's doing all these tikkunim. But after he does all that, he still goes back to social media and looks at those things that are improper. You didn't disconnect yourself from the bad. So it doesn't matter what you're going to do, it's still going to be difficult for you. As long as you don't disconnect from the bad, the problem will persist and increase. And if you don't understand, you haven't put your finger on what's the problem. Because once you know what the problem is, you disconnect. Once you disconnect, everything changes. Like in a split second. Chot Hashem Kerefayim. He says, and, uh, he says that the person has to tell himself in his heart, First of all, I'm going to leave the sin. He says, I'm never going back to the sin until the day I die. I don't care what happens. I'm not going to the sin no matter what. Even if the world turns upside down, I'm willing to die and not to repeat this sin. And all of a sudden you see that the whole world will change the way of nature for the person to be successful again. The minute you find out what's that thing that's wrong and you disconnect from it, fully disconnect, everything changes. So when people go through struggles, instead of like pointing the fingers, ah, oh, it's my wife, my children, Uman, uh, maybe I'll do a tikkun here, Ayn Hara, this and that, sit and, look and point the fingers at yourself. 
What am I doing? I wake up in the morning. What am I doing? Oh, is that right? Is that wrong? I go to work. What am I doing? Is that right? Is that wrong? I go to lunch. This is what I'm doing. Is that right? Is that wrong? I come home. This is what I'm doing. Is that right? Audit yourself. Once you audit yourself, you'll find that thing. You'll start to narrow it down. And you'll start to eliminate some things. And eventually, it's going to click. And there it is. Everything disappears. But as long as you're not doing that, as not doing the spiritual audit of yourself, you're not going to find it. You're always going to think it's something else, external, exterior. No, it's internal. Furthermore, he says we have to really, really distance ourselves from uh, the devices. That that device, whether you like it or not, always brings a negative thought that is not pure. That's what it's made for. And the minute a person has a negative thought or an impure thought, he begins to deteriorate and go down and eventually uh, he sins. And now the rabbi is going to go back to Perik Hay and says, and keep in mind, that by the time the person sins, the cable is cut and there is no more connection to draw the holy life force into the person. And that's when the person does the, the mitzvot de la chamurot. And since he has that, uh, since those uh, strings are, are cut, he's now is no longer connected to the holy life force, and now he gets all his life, sitra achra. Now, technical question: If a person went through karet, which means that the rope is tied, right? So let's just say the power cord, right? There's a power cord. The power cord is cut. There should be no more power. If the power cord is cut, if it's karet, and there's nothing connecting you anymore to, to, to Hashem, how are you alive? Wi-Fi. Huh? Wi-Fi. Chazak. <laughs> so once again now, we're drilling down, and even in this concept, a dual pathway. Another way to understand in a deeper level. He says this rope that connects us to God has two sides to it. The internal and the external. He says, the internal side gets cut off. That's it. And the internal side, the pnimiyut, the special thing that we have, that gets cut off. However, the external side, that doesn't, um, that doesn't stop. That's the external side of the soul. And he's able to continue living because now the power flows from the external side of the soul and it gets its power from the Sitra Akha. Sitra Akha is the Klipat Noga, that is the termination that covers it. Because anyways, that's where he gets his thoughts and his actions from the Sitra Akha. Now, We're getting to the end. Yes. It says, So, so since the person, he is the one that sins and starts to draw his life force from the other side. He gets a big portion of a life force from the Sitra Akha. You know why? Because originally this client comes from where? It comes from Hashem. This guy usually gets it from the royal family, gets it from the source, from the, the, the letter hey of Havaya. This guy's a good guy. We need to keep him. So he gives him an extra portion, more than the usual. Everybody gets the regular portion, right? He gets noten chelik barosh. He gets even more from Yechidut Asata, Mish'ar Anivrein, from all other creations. So if you're a Jew, that originally your source is the hay from Havaya, that is now, uh, you know, captive by Noga, when you start to draw from the Sitra Acha through the Klipat Noga, you get extra portions. Why? Because this guy, we got to keep him here. The Sitra Acha wants all the Jews on that side. Because otherwise, if you go to the other side, game over. Vidai Lanavin, it's enough for anybody that understands how this works. Powerful. Very, very powerful. Exactly. It says, furthermore... It actually seems more powerful than the other side, but it's not. It's, it does give more power, but yeah. however... So, so, so you could say, yeah. so if the Sita Acha gives more power, then once again, there's, a, a, there's no balance. balance. 
The Sita Acha is stronger because it's giving a double portion, triple portion than what all other ones are coming are, are, are getting. So he says, Omnam Tzarich Radad Kadosh Baruch Hu Moret Tibosh Lashab B'Tshuva. He says, even though that they have a, a, a strong grip on him, the Kadosh Baruch Hu wakes up his heart and makes him want to do Teshuvah. How? How is that? He says, Mevi alav davar shem me'od. He says, you know that guy that is now getting his life force from Sitracha? And now it seems like he's doomed because he's getting a double portion, triple portion from the other side and it doesn't look like, he, like the good side is overpowered, the negative side, the, the Sitracha side. What do we do with him? HaKadosh Baruch Hu creates an event, a situation, so much that it's going to want him to do Teshuvah. What does he do? HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings afflictions upon him. He says, not only that, he brings him to a, a, a point where he breaks him down. And to the point that he's so broken, that with a broken heart, he comes for Se'at HaDashmaya from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He says, please, because when a person is weak and broken, that is when they're the most real with themselves and the place that they are in their life. At that moment when he's broken hearted, he's really being genuine and real with Kadosh Baruch Hu. And when he talks from that point in his life, from that emotion to God, Kadosh Baruch Hu says, this is what I wanted. That's the starting point. Let's get out from the other side. And he gives him Sata Dishmaya. He gives him power to get out of there. But what? You have to break him down. Sometimes you have to break down people. Sometimes you have to break down people before they, the true side of them comes up because people are living in, 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 you know, in, a, in, in a lot of layers of sheker. Uh, of, uh, of, uh, and this is why it says in Pekei Avot that we are not able to understand God. Because when we look at Shalvat Reshaim, when we see the wicked in peace, and then we see the Tzaddikim in, with affliction, we see the righteous with affliction, we try to learn, ah, look at this guy. This guy is a Dafyomi guy. He's in Kolel eight hours a day. He's uh, ultra religious, Chalav Israel, Pat Israel, everything all like this. The guy can't close the month. He can't even pay his rent. He has no money. He's asking money for... Uh, to, you know, j- j- just for food for Shabbat. Why? He's doing everything Hashem wants. Oh, and let me look at the other guy. Oh, look at this guy. Eats pig. Drives on Shabbat. You know, married a, a, a Gentile a, a girl. And he's rolling. The guy looks like he's super successful. Okay, God, I see how it works. When you're religious and do everything right, you suffer. And when you do everything wrong, you get everything that you want. So a person who's like at a crossroads... He looks left and looks right. What is he going to choose? Right? Pekah Avot says, no. Don't do that. Don't try to understand God. Don't try to look at, uh, at uh, Rav Duvid. And then all of a sudden look at, uh, at Moshe. And say, no, I want Moshe's life instead of Rav Duvid. No, 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 no. Don't think that that's how it works. Only God knows how things work. Look what he says. He says, Rabbi Yanai says, don't ever, ever try to figure out the ways of God of why the righteous suffer and the wicked prosper. The Kadosh Baruch Hu is the one that rules the world. He knows exactly what he's doing. And it could be a scenario. And again, he gives us just a few scenarios over here. But I just want to put a promo in there. We are going to have a class in the ladies class, the Muna Life class. It's going to be maybe two classes from now. Uh, why the why the wicked uh, prosper and why do the righteous suffer? It has a lot to do with Baal Tanya and his uh, his approach. But over there, we're going to get five or six different scenarios to understand how God runs the world, even though we don't know. But it's a big, big uh, life tool class. Uh, stay tuned for that one. But over here, he gives imagine a person that he has one big mitzvah. In other words, he saved the Jewish soul. There goes little Moishi. He's over there crossing the street. Comes the car and is about to run over him. And this guy runs with his gold chains, his tattoos, and a Burger King falling out of his mouth. And he pushes the kid and he saves him. And he saved the Jewish life. He saved the Jew. Right? 
But everything that he does is off the derech. Everything else is <laughs> nothing by the book. So how do you deal with this guy? He just saved the Jewish soul. And he doesn't do anything according to the Torah. How do you deal with him? So look what he says. His lifestyle has no chance for him to earn Olam Haba. Why? Because of all his bad actions. So what does the Kaddosh Baruch Hu do? He says, it seems like he really likes this world. He loves it. He can't get enough of the food. He can't get enough of the woman. He can't get enough of the money. You know what? Let me reward him here. You know that soul that he saved? How much is it worth in the Shemaim? And all of a sudden the guy is a multi-millionaire. You know why? God is cashing, cashing him out here. He says, I'm cashing you out here. Why? Because there's no ticket to ride for the next world. So when you see this guy, he's wicked. Why does he have so much? We don't know. As a matter of fact, it, it, you know, we'll go to it a little bit deeper, but it could be schut avot. It could be has one mitzvah that's standing for him. It, maybe he, he does things that are, that, are, that are concealed. Who knows? There's so many things that, the, that could happen. Sakharosh Baruch Hu says, so when something like that happens, don't try to make a kalva chomer. Don't choose that path. You don't know what I have to deal with with him while I'm giving him his reward in this world. He says, furthermore, there's that righteous individual that, that all he wants is to get to Olam Haba. And in order to get to Olam Haba, he's willing to suffer any type of suffering in this world for one second in Olam Haba. He doesn't care about this world. Give him the hardest life ever for 120 years. As long as it atones, as long as it fixes, as long as, as, long as it, 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 it rectifies the soul and it comes back with the neshama that is illuminating in the shama and it gets his maximum olam haba, he says, thank you very much, besimcha. Afflictions, besimcha. Asur adam yishol shelom. Don't ask questions. Don't try to figure things out. Don't try to make kal vachomer from the guy that's sitting next to you in shul. Follow your story. Follow what the cards that Hashem dealt you. And just follow the rules of what Chazal tell us. Because a lot of things are not explainable and are not uh, clear to us. It says, and, and right now, the only thing that we can learn from is that only, the only thing that we need to understand, we're in exile. We're after the destruction of, the, of, of Bet HaMikdash. And all our life forces comes from within the Klipot. That's what we need to know. And where it's in the Noga. So your job is to do what? Not look at other people. What, how you're taking this, uh, this neutral place that we're in and turning it into positive. When I eat, how do I eat? Is it with Natilat Yadayim? Is it with Kavana? Is it with Birkat Amazon? Or am I just stuffing my face till I can't move anymore and the buttons are like starting to stretch? There's two ways to eat. There's ways to eat in order to stay healthy and strong for the service of God. Or, you use, or, or just to uh, you know, satisfy your palate. That's the Klipat Noga. Which way are you taking it? Because that that's our job. Right now, that's our job to know is how to manage being in Klipat Noga. So we see that this is the, the work that gets done in the exile. Uh, the, the work of the Shekhinah when it's in the exile in order to... We'll, we'll leave in a few minutes. <laughs> Just two more pages and we're done. We're we're two more pages. It's the last call for alcohol this evening. <laughs> it's really a great class. It, for hours. <laughs> it, it doesn't stop. And, and Baruch Hashem, it's not me. I'm literally like the waiter serving the food, as Rabbi Mansur says. Somebody cooked the meal and I'm just uh, serving. No. I'm just serving okay. it. Okay, let's continue. Uh, we literally have just two pages and we're done. So now that we are in, the, in God's holy presence, the Shekhinah is in the exile. And we are uh, in the life force that typically comes from the good place of Havaya in the time of Bet HaMikdash is now... Uh, hijacked by Noga. And that is where we get our life force from. And So what happens when a person does a proper Teshuvah? And that he actually does Teshuvah Me'ava. What is the process of a person that does a proper Teshuvah process within Noga? 
הזי מסלק מהם ההשפעה שהמשיך במעשיו ומחשבותיו, כי בתשובתו מחזיר השפעת השכינה למקומה. He says, when a person does a proper teshuvah process, he removes from him all the negative klipot uh, that are stuck on him from his thoughts and from his actions, and he brings him back to the original sources, if he's getting his life source from the shekhinah, when it resided in its place. So this whole life force of havaya from the letter hey, like in the time of Bet HaMikdash, when the shekhinah was residing there, is still possible, and a person can get his life force from there, When what? When he does a proper teshuvah process. So it's not off the table. That whole thing that we just discussed right now, it's for the sinners that don't do teshuvah. That's, that's their pathway. We are now on the I-95, different lane. Beneath the ground. Only us. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu, hey, go as fast as you want. But many people think that they're doing teshuvah. אבל התשובה שהם עושים אינה נכונה, he says, you have to be careful. Some people think that they're doing the teshuvah process, and it's not the right teshuvah. They do a, 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 the teshuvah process with fasting, with afflictions, with ta'anit uh, dibur, not speaking. He says that's not the proper way to do teshuvah. He says the proper way to do teshuvah is press record. It's easy and it's good for you. It says, nish'ar kmo shahaya. Be you. Be you. Continue to be yourself. Be'oto guf v'otan neshama. Same body, same soul. Don't hate yourself for what you did. Stay yourself. Rak, shu mosif me'at me'at. Slow and steady wins the race. Just add more. A little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more goodness in your life. Ve mosif me'at b'irat shamayim. A little bit more the fear of heaven, fear of God. Ki ha tosefet ba'adraga me'viyah l'italut nechona. Somebody who goes baby steps, little by little, up in Avodat Hashem, That is the path to success in spirituality. Drastic turnarounds, flipping, hot, you know, like complete 180. It hasn't proven uh, a good result uh, uh, statistically. But people that were able to add, you know what, from now on, I'm going to concentrate on just being able to bless on my drinks. Okay, that's great. Once you're on automatic, you know what, I'm ready to bless on food. Once you're on automatic, you know what, There's no way that I'm going to eat bread without Natila Tedayim, without Birkat Amazon. Okay, great. You know what? Shabbat, I'm gonna, there's no way that, I'm going to, that Shabbat is going to pass without me doing at least two songs on Shabbat. You know what? Seudah Shlishit, I always skip it. I'm going to add. You know what? I never pray. From now on, I say Elish Shema. You know what? I never say Mudani. You know what? I never say Shema Shri Say. Little. Little by little. And when it feels right, when you're on automatic, when it becomes second nature, you add one more thing. Slow and steady wins the race. It's like being on a diet. You can't go on a diet on an extreme diet. It always comes back. Last. You it always comes back. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. And Chovot HaLevavot, Rabbeinu Bachya says, Al tosif arbe shemen laptila. He says, don't add a lot of oil to the wick. Why? Because when you put a lot of oil on the wick, it puts, it puts out the light. He says, sometimes a person comes back, does teshuvah, but what happens? His wife is not with him. The guy is now half a Baba Sali, and his wife is still in shorts and t-shirt, and she's like, I'm not there. You left me behind. There's a lot of couples that sometimes one person in the marriage goes faster than the other person in the marriage. And what happens is, there's a disconnect. The Rav is mentioning it over here. When a person comes back and does teshuvah, and he sees that he's left his, his wife behind, it's not the right time. And not only that, it's not a way to force her to come back into Teshuvah. That's not the right way either. A person needs to go slowly, slowly, and constantly look around to the people around him to make sure they're in the same level as him. I can tell you, many, many, many homes have this, where either the, fa the, the, the father discovers God, or the mother discovers God, and there it is. One looks like Taliban, the other one looks like a boy. And they're two different like, people living in the house, and what's going on? Right? This guy is like, you know, he grew a beard, she's covering her head, uh, you know, and he looks just like the guy next door. And he, like you look at them in the street, they don't even look like a match. So the rabbi is saying over here, okay, you discovered God, you're ready to teshuvah, make sure that you bring your husband with you, your, your, your wife with you, your children with you. Don't be there and you become a complete mismatch to your family. 
והתשובה האמיתית מדודה צעד אחרי צעד. It has to do it slowly but surely. Look around you, make sure that you don't leave anybody behind you. And he concludes with the final statement, וזוהי תשוב את התאה מבחינת גלות. And this now to summarize what we said about the hey in God's name of Havaya that, uh, that, that we were talking about comes from the word Teshuvah. What is Teshuvah? The word Teshuvah cut it in half. Teshuv, hey, let the hey come back. Which hey are we discussing? We've been discussing the entire night. Hey, Tata'a, the lower level Teshuvah that is connected to the first hey in the name Havaya. And that's the hey that is connected to God's holy presence, the Shekinah, that is in exile. V'kmo shekatuv, v'shav Hashem elokecha et shevutecha. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings back the Neshama to its original place. When? Kloma im shevutecha. When you do teshuva, the soul comes back to its original source. And v'kem ha'amar yavotein zechona mibacha in the Masechet Megillah. Oh, Megillah. V'eshiv lo ne'emar, v'shav. He says, in Masechet Megillah, it says, this Pasuk says, V'shav Hashem Elokecha, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu returned. Now, the Megillah says, hey, hey, it doesn't say V'heshiv, that Hashem returned. It says V'shav, and He returned. Meaning, that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when we come back from exile, us and God come back from exile together. V'shav, the Pasuk says, not V'heshiv, to show us that Hashem is in exile with us, and when we get back, when we do the proper Teshuvah process, it'll cause for Hashem and us to come back to the better place of being in Israel, Bet HaMikdash, and we'll get out of the exile. And this is, Because when a person does Teshuvah, he does it because he also cares for God to come back. Not just for your sins to go away, and for you to be in a good place. Part of your Teshuvah process, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry? Because I want Hashem's Shekhinah that is right now suffering in the Galut to end its misery and come back to Dirabat uh, Tachtonim in Yerushalayim. Meaning, pray for God. Pray for God to not be homeless, not to be suffering because of His children in the exile. That's part of a proper Teshuvah. It's a Teshuvah from Ahava that you care more about God than you care about yourself. So he says, so what, God is dependent on us? This is a final question that he says over here. So what, God is dependent on us? So the Rav says, when it comes to action, it's dependent on us. When it comes to the internal, that our heart needs to feel that we need to come back, Hashem helps with that. The Teshuvah process is a tag team. God helps the heart come back, and we come back with our actions. Here at Tzom. שהשם יתברך יזכן ויתקרב לה ולשוב בתשובה באמת ולעובדו בלבב שלם. May it be the will of God that we merit to get close to Him and to do a proper teshuva process, a truthful teshuva process and to serve Him with all of our heart. שהשם יתברך אתכם ושמח אתכם. Thank you for listening for this uh, 